hey what's up how's everybody doing if you can please like subscribe and comment would be greatly appreciated and we're about to get into it my name is mary jane we're going to talk about snowfall season one episode five let's talk about teddy pentagram just another tko oh my goodness and then barbecuing the good old days how huh? reminiscing so anyways and also is is um philip um which is Franklin's father, is he the guy from Clockers? So let's start it. So Teddy and Alejandro are stranded in the desert. They are somewhere in the desert stranded. And it ain't no joke where they at. And it looks like Alejandro is about to pass away. He's about to become corpse. And it looks like Teddy is about to die of dehydration. But even though he's drinking water, he's talking crazy, talking silly. So we can see where Teddy's mind is that Teddy chose to fly a different route and land somewhere different because he felt like, you know, somebody was watching him or whatever. But anyways, you know, Teddy tries... Teddy tries to fly the plane, but he's not able to. But Teddy does collect all the drugs, and he does put them in the plane. And he also keeps, you know, Alejandro dehydrated by squeezing water on his mouth so to make sure Alejandro don't choke if he pours the water down his throat. So that was cool. And so then, you know, um, Teddy is looking at the picture. So I believe that is Alejandro's wife and kid. And so Alejandro wakes up, he gets ready to fly a plane. And so Alejandro says to Teddy, what does it matter where we land at if we work with the CIA? That's what I'm saying. And so um, Teddy goes, you got a point. You got a point. So sometimes Teddy's very smart. He's very good at reading people. He's very good at interviewing people and questioning people. But sometimes his brain is it just overreacts too much, which can cause harm to their operation. So they have to work together more. So moving on from that, um, we get Franklin. Franklin's with Sissy, his mother, and they're talking. And she tells Franklin, like, I know you ain't working. I don't know why you're trying to act like you, you've you been working with all these sick days. And so Franklin tells his mom, hey, yes, I have not been working. Um, I quit my job the other day. And his mother's like, okay, I understand you don't want to work in the liquor store, but you got to work. You got to do something here. You got to do something around here. And so anyways, Franklin was, like, looking at these pictures. And he was like, oh, look at these pictures. They're nice. And the mom was like, you know, I took those pictures or whatever. And his pictures of Franklin's father. It looks like he could have been in the military or he could have been a former cop or he could have been and the black panthers or whatever but it was a it was a place where his father was healthy where his father was good where his mind was right and everything in the pictures and franklin's almost reminiscing on the pictures looking at his father uh, of what his father has become now and it also and it kind of like softens him up where he wants his father back into his life kind of because he felt bad to see the way that his, his father is and also Franklin being in the drug game and seeing people die and having one of his friends kill somebody and all the stuff he's been through I think he feels like he needs a strong man around a man around again and maybe he can possibly make his help his father get back to where he used to be I'm assuming so anyways they reminisce about the 4th of July parties that they used to throw at at the house or whatever and so you know um franklin goes my franklin goes um my father cared zero shits about he had um for somebody that had zero <laughs> zero love for this country um he had no shame and make having an excuse to throw down on the 4th of July party and whatever. So he's basically saying, even though my father didn't give a shit about this country, but he would party and he would throw down with no shame and on the 4th of July. And his friends would come by, his crew, and it would be like a wonderful time. It would be like a good time or whatever. So Franklin's over there kind of reminiscing or whatever. And so Franklin says, Mom, why you never, like, kept up with taking photographs? And she was like, taking pictures don't pay the bills, baby. It don't pay the bills at all. So then Franklin wakes up the next day. He goes looking for his father. He meets one of his father's friends. His father's friend charges him $20 for information. And back then, $20 is a lot of money. So Franklin finds his father, and he bails him out of jail. Bells his father out. Whew. He bails his father out. So anyways, um... Um, Lucia, she invites, you know, Gustavo to go to the 4th of July cookout. And um, Gustavo said, no, he don't think it's a good idea. The church ladies come knock on the door at their stash house at their little drug spot right through the church. And say, is there any work today? Lucia was like, no, you guys got the day off. It's 4th of July. <laughs> she don't say it's 4th of July, but she was like, no, there's no work today. And so Gustavo says, it's a good idea if I just stay here or whatever. So he's staying, he's staying at the crib. He's staying at the stash spot or whatever. And so anyways, um, we get to um, 
the Teddy Pentagram TKO cookout party with Sissy and her family, um, Jerome, um, Auntie Lou, um, Leon, Kevin, and, you know, the girl, the his next door neighbor that he has a crush on. You know, she's there. Everyone's there at the party. They, everyone looked great. They looked good. It was, it was nice to see the old hairstyles, the old clothing, their style, just everything just looking all good or whatever. So they're cooking on the grill. Sis, she's on the grill. She's cooking. She's flirting with the guy that's standing on the other side or whatever. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she sees her. Um, Franklin's father, she runs and she's like, get that fuck out of here. Why are you coming? Stay away from around here. Don't be around here. Whatever. Then Franklin runs up to try to stop his mother from going off. You know, Franklin's mother friend tries to stop her from going, stop, um, sissy from going off or whatever. She was like, I don't know why you coming around here. And so then, you know, Franklin's father was like, well, this little nigga is the one that bailed me out of jail. <laughs> And so then that's when, you know, Sissy, she just paused for a second. So now she's realizing, okay, I think Franklin want, you know, his dad here, whatever, because they was rumin they was talking about um his dad the night before, whatever. So he was like, Well, since he since um Franklin was like he came, Franklin um, Franklin's mom was like, well, if he's going to be around here, he needs to go take his stinking ass a shower. She ate his, his stinking dirty ass a shower. <laughs> so anyways, you know, Franklin, he goes inside the house or whatever. And so his mom follows behind him and she goes, a, a, a picture wasn't good enough for you. You had to bring him around. You had to bring his stinking ass. You had to bring his stinking ass around here. <laughs> Like she's going in on Franklin's father. She'll go a picture wasn't enough last night. A picture says a thousand words, son. <laughs> and then so Franklin was like, nah, he came up he came over here on his own. And so, you know, Sissy was like, Yo, I don't want to stay I don't want him to stay. You know, every time he stays, what happens? And Franklin was like, That's on you, mom. And he goes, Son and she says to Franklin, Don't get it twisted. It's only a single act of kindness. That no good ass nigga is nothing but he ain't nothing but a hobo to me. When she says he ain't nothing but a hobo to me, I was like, I haven't heard hobo in years being used. And she says his stinking ass. <laughs> and she says, don't get it twisted, Franklin. So anyways, we get Jerome and Aunt Lou. They're together sitting together. Aunt Lou is sitting on Jerome's lap. I don't know if it's incest or they've been in a relationship so for so long. He calls her auntie or whatever. They're not blood related. I have no idea. But it seems like incest and it's full fledged. It's full fledged out in the open between them. So it's just like, okay, what's going on? So then, you know, Lou says to, you know, Franklin, what's up with your pops? The other night, you don't want to say shit to him. And now he's here. And so Jerome goes, Uncle Jerome goes, um, um, ask, ask the boy a real question. Like, when, when is he going to return my gun? <laughs> my pistol when is he gonna return my pistol you ain't got to tell me what you did with my pistol um franklin but franklin was like i wasn't gonna tell you shit from jump so don't even worry about it we ain't got to talk about that and franklin was like yeah whatever so anyways franklin father's watching through the window he's watching and seeing his son having this little converse with jerome and lou so he knows something up then gustavo gustavo he ends up going Gustavo, Pedro comes to go get Gustavo to go to the family's party, the 4th of July party, whatever. And um, Gustavo goes, whatever. He gets dressed up. He gets, and he didn't ask him. He kind of like told Gustavo that he was going. So anyways, <laughs> um, um, leaving you wanted to sit with your father. You want to put, <laughs> so then that's when, you know, Lucia says, why? So Lucia sees, you know, Gustavo there. And then Gustavo goes back and talk to Pedro's father. Lucia is like, yo, why are you letting, you know, Gustavo go talk to your father? He's going to put a noose around all of our necks. And um, Pedro goes, not all of our necks. My dad finds out I had anything to do with it. He's not going to put a bullet in my head. He's not going to shoot me because I'm his only son. So basically, Pedro setting up the scene to let them know that he's higher than Lucia and Gustavo and he could do whatever he wanted to his father they ain't gonna kill him so he's protected so he can be sloppy and he can be lazy or whatever so that makes Lucia thinks you know that makes her think like damn I went into business where Pedro probably wasn't a good idea and Lucia's already thinking that Pedro is washed because of how he couldn't act when they killed that dude that was their father's bodyguard or whatever or groundsman or security 
so anyways and then so then pedro says to Lu to lucia um smile smile with your fake smile keep keep hold your head up look up smile and and keep that fake smile on your face and be your normal self now look at me and repeat what i just said to you so like phaedro stone and digs back at lucia because lucia said that to pedro last week making him feel less of a man like he was weak so he had so he couldn't wait to try to get one up on lucia and make her feel weak because she called him out for it because he almost let her get killed um, because the guy was on Lucia's neck choking her to death and it wasn't for Gustavo waking up, she would have been dead. So he ain't feeling that. So then, um, so we get Jerome, Jerome, he gets on top of the roof at their cookout, whatever. And, he, and he's already smoking a little bit of weed and he's drinking, you know, some beer. And then on top of that, he's about to put a bunch of fireworks in the box, about to light it. And they all go off go crazy and then the roof kind of semi catches on fire and then you know he slids down and he falls off the roof it's like oh and jane everybody's just looking like damn and he was like oh and jerome is like he don't even give a shit so <laughs> oh. so anyways um um the father sees you know franklin talking to um kevin and leon and having a conversation with them and he's kind of picking up the conversation. Franklin's calling a shot, but he's probably having some trust issues going on. And so that's when, you know, Franklin goes down there to talk to his father. And his father, you know, reassures Franklin and let him know the boys that are on the porch with him, they've been by his by his heels since he was able to walk. So you can trust them. These are your real friends. So he reassures Franklin that because Franklin was unsure of that. So his father just come in for a moment and can re could make franklin feel secure with a decision that he needs to make about letting kevin in on the letting kevin in on what they did or whatever because now they find out jj got killed jj and his girlfriend got killed which was one of um um carvel carvel's boys or whatever did that to um jj because jj was rolling with um the dude that got raped or whatever so We'll see what happens. So, you know, uh, Franklin was like, you know, he doesn't want to jump to conclusions. He wants to wait. And so Le um, so Leon is like, yo, we're strength in numbers. Let Kevin in. Let Kevin know or whatever. And Franklin's still kind of timid about the situation because he don't really want nobody to know his business. And plus, he's not so sure about everything because all the hiccups and all the things that went wrong on his first time around in the drug business was selling keys. He was already doing good his first time in the business selling keys Well. Was dealing with heavy drugs because he was selling weed for his uncle. So, anyways, um, Franklin. So then Franklin father said, "So what was going on with you and the conversation that you have with your uncle Jerome, or whatever?" And then Franklin was like, "Oh, not nothing." And so then, you know, Franklin father says, "What's up with that that bruise, or whatever?" And Franklin goes, "Nah, it's just it was just work or whatever. Um, you know, one of the boxes hit me or whatever." And so, <laughs> and so he was like, so one of the boxes hit you. He was like, so, the, so, so either you're slanging food and you're slanging cans on the shelves or his father said, which job is that? The one you're slanging, um, for, um, cans and food for Miss Mimi and Miss Wawa and, or are you slanging drugs for your uncle Jerome over there slanging dope for uncle Jerome. So it's like his father's there that quick and can pick up on everything that, you know, uh, Franklin is doing just by looking and watching. So it shows you that his father's smart. His father's intelligent. His father has some type of skill in picking up things and knowing things. His father's not totally gone. So it makes me think that his father's going to have a role and um, Franklin, get, when Franklin gets back into the drug business, because Franklin does need some some type of protection, somebody that knows the business inside or out, or somebody that can call steps before they happen, somebody that can read situations, which Franklin Fathers does. And so, anyways, um, Franklin is now as upset because now his father just helped him make two helped him like with two decisions and his father ain't been around he, he told him about trusting your friends and then like okay i know what you're doing with jerome um you're selling dope for him so it's like his father knows everything that's going on and franklin's feeling like if you know everything going on why ain't you here you should have been here dad you should have been here or how his father's able to pick up on everything that's going on with franklin and he's only been around him for like less than 15 20 minutes and so franklin is kind of mad and upset about the situation so he, he so franklin was like shut the fuck up man shut up i don't want to hear what you got to say i don't want to hear that you're fucking sorry i don't want to hear that you made a mistake and then franklin father goes 
sorry. Nigga, I ain't sorry for nothing. I ain't never been sorry. Only thing I ever wanted, I ever wanted was to be my own man. And that hit Franklin hard because Franklin, that's all Franklin wants to do is be his own man. And that's why he chose to mess with Javi and do the things that he did with Javi and, Clor and Claudia and all this other stuff. And he did it on his own, but he realized he needs support. He needs a team with him. So... And then Franklin instantly gets upset because Franklin wants to be his own man. Because, you know, Franklin said that the system is rigged, so that's why he's going this way. He can't pay for college or whatever. If Franklin grew up in a private school and he went he went to school on the other side of town in the suburbs or whatever. So Franklin is knowledgeable about a lot of things and he's charismatic. So anyways, Franklin and, that, and his father, you can see his father's charismatic when he ain't drinking or people ain't upset with him that knows him. And he can and read things. And so also then that's when Franklin was like, um, you know, you, you ain't no man. You ain't no man. You ain't no fucking man. And then Franklin father would go, what you mean I ain't no man? Is that why you came looking for? You came looking for this man. You don't even know what's going on, man. You don't even know what's happening, man. So it makes me seem like his father knows what's going on. I don't know if Lou's telling him or his father got eyes everywhere because his father used to run the streets. Whether it was good or bad how he used to run the streets, his father got eyes or something. So anyways, um, he was like, so, so you, want, you want to ask me questions? They ask me questions. You know, you want to know answers. It's like you came looking for me. And you want to know questions. You want to know answers to. You came to the man. You came to a man, your father. And so Franklin was like, you ain't no fucking man. <laughs> he was like, then why you come looking for me then? <laughs> and so then Gustavo, he Gustavo actually has a meeting with Pedro's father. And Pedro's father said that everybody wants power. Everybody wants this. You can have a little bit of that power um, and everything. But if if you set me up or, or you cross me, I'm going to crush you. Basically letting him know. And then, Frank, and then um, Pedro's father says, get the fuck out of here. And so then, you know, the cop shows up to Franklin's house. And then the cops are all, you know, like, we heard shots of gunfire. And it was like, no, officer, it's just fireworks. It was on a roof or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Jerome says something smart. Then Franklin says something smart coming at the cops. And the cops grabbed Franklin, started choking him up, almost about to kill him. Franklin is looking around. He can see his mother. He can see his sister. He can see his mother, his friends and everything. And them all screaming to, for the police to get off. But he's, he's looking, he sees his father. His father is calm. His father is not acting up so it's like franklin's kind of conf probably can be confused by it by like why isn't his father trying to help him or uh, this is what being a man is is watching looking surveying the situation and his father wasn't going to leave until he knew the situation was calm or does his father belong into the black panthers or whatever organization that he was he ever belonged to it's not a good thing for him to talk to cops but it's not a really good thing for black men to talk to cops anyway most of the time and just like it ain't good in 2017, it wasn't good back in 1983 at the 1980s. So anyways, um, but Franklin noticed his father just watching and looking. And Franklin is looking at his father and he kind of like watching how calm he is, how he didn't act up, how he is behaving like a man. Because, you know, Franklin, he... Frank, Franklin father knows that he's do, he's selling drugs or whatever, but then he's going to bring the cops on and invite him into a situation and then letting the uncle make the fireworks go on. It's chaotic, a chaotic environment where Franklin's trying to make it a, a different environment. So that's probably why he called on his father or he just wanted his father to be around or his father and his mother to get back together, his father to support his mother. But he sees his father is calm and he's not reacting and all emotional like everybody else is around him. So anyways, the neighborhood cop that live on the same block as them, which the girl that Franklin got a crush on, he comes, he gets the two cops off of Franklin and then let them go. And then they leave and then Franklin's okay. <laughs> and then so the mom says, um, did you, did your father say anything to you before he left, before he walked away? Franklin was like, nah. <laughs> So, but anyways, if you look at the Mexican party, the Mexican 4th of July party, the, the cartel party, they don't have no problems or no cops, no nothing, because, you know, they're buying their drugs off the CIA, number one, so they're not going to get busted like that. Then, you know, the father and the uncle done paid, you know, big people off, like, you know, the cops, the districts, and the people in the office paid them off, so they don't, they're not going to have any trouble. They're doing the same thing as, you know, Franklin is doing, 
and um, but they put it, but they got more bodies on them, and they're distributing way more drugs and heavy drugs. Franklin just got into distributing um, drugs or whatever, so it's like you know, shit ain't fair, shit ain't right. They can have a good, decent party, ain't no cops gonna come, ain't nobody gonna come, and they can shoot fireworks, shit, they can blow up half of that little property, ain't nobody gonna fuck with them because they're well paid and well protected through through the CIA. So. Life ain't fair. That's why Franklin said the system is rigged. It's rigged, baby. It's rigged. So anyways, um, so then, you know, Gustavo goes over to Lucia and was like, Lucia, I want to be a partner. I want to be partner with, with you and Pedro. And Lucia was like, you know, Pedro is not going to have that. And so Gustavo was like, I already killed two people. I want N, motherfuckers. I want N. <laughs> oh, so anyways, now we now I think I realized if I'm st if I'm right that the picture that Tommy has, I mean Tommy, the picture that you know Terry has a CIA agent, it, that's a picture of Alejandro's wife, right and kid. <laughs> so anyways, Franklin, Franklin, Kevin, and um, Franklin, Kevin, and Leon and and. Leon, they get on, they get on top of the roof, and Frank and Leon goes, "It ain't no party unless the roof burned down, or you have a, or you have a fire. We don't need no water. Let the motherfucker burn." <laughs> so, anyways, so then after that, you know, they're talking, and so then you know, Franklin says to Kevin, "Hey, can I borrow your auntie's car tomorrow for a couple of hours?" And Kevin was like, "For what?" And he was like, "Cause I need to go see Harvey, Harvey, and Kevin, and and and." Leon is like so happy that now they know that with them together and them in the business is going to be a different type of shit, but they got to do things a lot different, a lot, lot different. So they're happy that Franklin's back in the drug game and, you know, Franklin can have got back into the drug game because now he's letting his, the people from Yay High, from Knee High, from Hill High got his back. Then he also has a gun. Then he knows Leon will pull, pull the trigger. Then on top of that, he does have Claudia as his custody, his customer. And so now his father coming around, him not wanting to be nothing like his father, thinking he's going to end up to be nothing, maybe made him want to make the decision to be, to get back into the game. And then his mom talking about he got to get a job somewhere. He got to make money or whatever. He don't got to work at the liquor store, but he got to work somewhere. And so maybe that, you know pushes him back into the business and plus his friends want him to get back in the business because they ain't never seen that much money even though Leon didn't get no money <laughs> and Kevin and, and, and Kevin didn't get no money and um Franklin and get this oh he only thing that he I really think he spent the money on was like he got his motorcycle and then I got taken away from him I guess like bailing his father out and giving his father's friend that's a bomb 20 bucks but other than that he really get to enjoy it, but I guess maybe he thinking the second time around he can do better. Cause you know what, second time is always a charm, third time is always a charm. But we'll see. Anyways, until next week, peace.